And we'll, we'll bring that up with Reese because I know he's been doing some work in colleges and stuff. We well. need it. We need it. And so I think we're going to go over to our local hero here. Um, I think this young man is making a big, big sound in the industry as well. He's uh, making some big noises on Instagram and social media. Um, um, I kind of like his work as well. He's on our radar. He's coming from the famous Dale Inns uh, Salon as well in Shrewsbury. Dale was a a finalist on our Barber of the Year, Gary, if you remember. Did really well as well, Dale. And again, you know, his name came up the other day in a conversation I had with Alan Beek. Without further ado, though, let's please welcome on Barber's Arms, episode 63, here on the 30th of July, live from Shrewsbury in the Dale Inns Salon. Please give a warm welcome to the one and only Mr. Reese Whitehouse. Hi, guys. You're okay. Thank you. How are you all doing? You all right? We're very well, young man. How are you? I'm very hot. There's not a lot of air conditioning in here, and it gets really muggy. So it's it's, it's a warm one. So I'm not uh, I'm not on the beer tonight. I'm, I'm designated driver. Got well. well I was going to say before we start, Reese, loved it last week on Facebook. You were sat in a bar, and you took some uh, videos of a guy singing "Come on, Eileen," <laughs> and then and then no wait, let me finish. Let me finish. Then he did the famous wall song that we had this five years ago at Salin Festival. And every year we get the audience rocking. And then England used it. And then he sang Sweet Caroline. But in the background, all I could hear was your voice, not anybody <laughs> else's voice. Do you know what? That's the first time I've been out in God knows how long. And normally I don't really like going out. Um, but it, it's, it's one of those where I think, uh, I think we just sort of walked past the part where I was out with my missus and her parents. And I think we were just looking for something quiet, to be honest. And then... We found it was like it was it was a nice pub and it sold it sold very cheap booze so it, it sort of became a it became a, a nice thing and then ended up um, ended up with me throwing up at five a.m. <laughs> well, all, all, yeah, all, I can say, all I can say there, Reese, is what a waste. That's it. Do you know what I mean? That's it. That's it. I think it was the Chinese afterwards that I wasted more than the booze, to be honest. Oh, of course. It was nothing to do with that last fight. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, it's a pleasure to have you on the show, mate. And also, all I can say is, Tal D Dale, he's tight if he hasn't got it. Working in these conditions is not right without air conditioning. So <laughs> he's, he's a good egg. Do you know what it is? It's, to be honest, we've got a window. So the, the shop that we're in, it's it's in um, it's in like an old um, it's like an old war hospital in Shrewsbury because Shrewsbury is like a like a really like medieval town because it keeps a lot of its old culture. Um, and we're in ward, what, what is Ward 9, and um, that was the maternity ward. And, and the thing is, there's still like bars in the windows and stuff, and it's, it's got so much character to it, and it's fantastic. The problem is, it's only got a little window, and we've got this fan, and obviously hair gets blown around everywhere, and you're sort of, you're sort of halfway for days like this for it to come round, but there's no point in installing air conditioning for what little summer that we do have, do you know what I mean? Well, I disagree there, and all my staff would probably <laughs> do if I, if I took the air con out now, they'd probably kill me. Um, I, I will admit though the the aircon in the pub. I, I, they used to call you know. I, mean, I bet you can't even remember this, but when you used to be able to smoke in the pub, I'm a not, I'm a non-smoker, and they they used to say, oh, my nickname was Monster, so they used to say, oh, Monster's coming. He's he's open the he's put the air conditioner. On. <laughs> I used to wedge the front door open so I could get get into the pub and the smoke dissipate all the smoke in the pub. So air what? conditioning. Day was the front door open anyway. Well, what I always found weird about that is when you walk into a restaurant and there was an area that was no smoke, and as if the smoke would just stop at that point. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't make any, wouldn't make any sense to me at all. It wouldn't make any when, sense. It didn't smell it. In, 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 our, in our local pub, when back in the day where you could smoke, it used to look, you walked in and it was like a Turkish bath. You couldn't see <laughs> the, the other side of the room anyway. Yeah. I'm sure Sam will remember this as well anyway. In, it's in a bit being before a my older. time. I think when we were a cleaner in local workingmen's club when you were all out drinking and I used to go with her whilst you were cleaning. But yeah, I can remember the walls being yellow. And also, <laughs> do you not find that your clothes smell different now when you've come out, when you used to go into places where you come back and you're like, even if you didn't smoke, your clothes would just reek of it. Anyway, that's that. Reese, um, it's great to have you on Barber's Arms, mate. I think you're making you're one of the new kids on the block. You're making a big <laughs> splash there. I know you've been entering our awards, and uh, the the World Barber of the Year is uh, again ready for entry at the end of this month. So I'd love to see your uh, entries in for that as well. Um, 
Before we move on as well, guys, I just want to say, obviously, uh, you'll see Joff's uh, Instagrams and stuff on the screen and also Reese's social media. I'm Sammy Shaw Wall. Gaz is the British Barber. Barber underscore arms is our social media on our website. It's the barbersarms.co.uk. And if you want to email us, it is barbersarms at the British Barber. Them's our social media um, account. Reese. Tell everybody though, looking at you and where you are and where you first. Had, well, I, I, I'm not going to say that because Mika Rich said that once in front of Roy Keane when I burst onto the scene. Did you, and I'm, I'm, I'm you, I, you've never really met me in person, but if you sat there and said when I burst onto the scene, I'm like, really? Did you really burst onto the scene? <laughs> so I'll, I'll rephrase that though. Making your name in the industry. See how clever I did that? Yeah. Um, how would you describe Reese? White House, what would you describe yourself as? Uh, I mean, in general, or, or sort of just, where, where just, I'm at now? Just the way that people have seen you as a barber, you know, in the profession. How do you describe yourself? What's your style? What's your, uh, what's I your style? I guess I'm that guy that's, that's probably all over Instagram like a rash at the minute. Um, I try and make myself everywhere as, as much as possible, try and keep myself as busy as possible. Um, I don't know. To be honest, to be honest, I, I've been doing this only for five years. Um, I only joined. Uh, I only joined Hints back in <laughs> January 2020. And we all know how that went. So um, there's been there's sort of been a, sh- a short period of time because prior to that, I was I was managing a, a shop in a town over for about three years, um, and I couldn't really um, I couldn't really um, sort of find find my roots, find my sort of. Uh, find my my style there so to speak so i'd say I'm, 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 i'd like to it's a difficult one because i don't really like to sort of pigeonhole but i'd say i'm very much about the sort of new styles skin fades obviously crops are massive i get a lot of crops from in the chair um so yeah i'd sort of like to sort of generalize myself as probably if you ask the senior instagram barber if i'm perfectly honest with you but um, <laughs> Do you know we, we, we you know we had Dale on there. I'm sure you watched the show when he came on, and he was yeah. very honest. You know, he was very honest. You know, he, he he told us about how, you know, he'd almost fell out of love with the job. He, he yeah. questioned whether he wanted to stay in the job, um, and and he sent us some lovely messages after saying, you know, he's he got he got you know almost inspired again to 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 yeah. take the mantle up again. Um, I know you, you guys have been done, been doing some education. I know he was really keen on getting into the education scene as well. You've been doing some bits and bobs with um, um, Shrewsbury College, haven't you? You've already yeah, done one. Yeah. You've, um, you've, al- you've already done one one seminar. I think you're due to do another workshop, aren't you? Yeah, well? you just announced it yesterday. Yeah, we just announced that yesterday. That's quite cool, actually. Um, Obviously, this is a very underregulated industry. We all know that. It's it's one of those where, you know, we like that sort of crossover. A lot of what Men's Spire are doing, we, we really like that crossover between hairdressing and, and barbering. Um, you know, we we are obviously Dale has a lot of accolades to his name. The shop's got a lot of accolades to their name, and it's it's sort of, you know, we get a lot of people coming up to us going, "Oh, can we have an apprenticeship? Can we do this? Can we do that?" What's quite nice is because we work so closely with the college is that we can sort of see firsthand what, you know, what people see, you know, there's even tutors there, which, which is, which is quite nice to see as well. Cause I remember when I was doing my um, MBQ level two, they fill you full of such confidence and it's amazing what they do. You know, you, you do get filled with such confidence and, and, uh, and they, you know, they wrap you up in cotton wool. The problem is as soon as you step into that barber environment, I found that, you know, I just, it was a sink or swim sort of thing for me. So the first place I stepped into after my apprenticeship, you know, it was a case of, right, okay, well, I'm going to do this for four days a week for free. I'm going to, you know, I did that for months. I drove to town over to do it for free just to learn, just to, just to get better. And the thing is, what, what we sort of want to see with these colleges is, you know, we, we sort of want to cut out that middleman, cut out that sort of, you know, let's make the mistakes and kind of go, all right, well, we're here, you're there. We'll do this for free for the college if you want. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, obviously, when people, you know, um, you know, people can obviously pay to come on the uh, come on the day as well. But it's just it's just something giving back. I mean, I I, I know I always wanted to sort of go into the education side of things. To be perfectly honest, I know Dale did as well. I mean, when I started here with Dale, 
you know, my my aspirations have never been owning a shop. It's it's never been sort of anything like that, which is generally the natural progression of things. Um, it's just it's always been about education, really. I mean, even prior to wanting to be a barber, I think, I think my my group was was teaching. Um, so it's nice to actually be able to have that platform, and I think we take a lot of pride in that platform as well. Um, you know, we, we take a lot of pride where that's concerned. So obviously, our shop is so busy and. You know, I'd like to think that we kick out a lot of good work. We're all very proud of our work. And obviously when people see that, they want to learn from us. And we're, we're really, really, you know. Lots of, lots of well. competition, I can imagine, in there with you two. Uh, <laughs> building this career. You're trying to build your career. Uh, I think you were very, very close last year, uh, getting through to the finals as well. So, listen, mate, I want you to enter this year as well. We're going to ask you if you can get and um, give us a little look round ins as well. We're there. If you can get the camera and give us a little so, look round. Have a look at yeah, so I will, I will a sort of pick it up. Since we've been in there, just while you're doing that, give a big shout out to guys one of my pals. You've met him, Tom Cass. Cass has sat at home watching us tonight. He's all lonely. And he just said, <laughs> Can you send out a message to all the young female barbers out there? He's single and he's ready to mingle. Um, so if you want to follow Thomas Cassie on his Facebook, you can do that. He's just had a beautiful hair transplant. He's all buffed up, ready to go. He looks the business. So he's all ready to date. Back over to you, Reese. Uh, while we have a look around your shop. So that's my corner. There, that's why I tend to do most things. I've just had everything set up with a ring light, um, just because I like to look my best. Do you know what I mean? Um, so that's uh, Andy. That's our other guy that's, that's working here. We took him on in December. He's absolutely flying. That's Dale's chair. That's him himself. Obviously, he likes to have a big green wall. He only has to water that once a week, apparently. Um, <clears> and we have just literally just taken on a new guy as well, uh, who starts on the 10th, and that's the reception, where we also have a load of products, and Dale's just started buying a T-shirt as well. Products Let's have a really look at a cool. T-shirt. Let's have a look at a T-shirt while we're there. Yeah, how's that? So, to be honest, these are a really nice fit. Uh, they're a little bit oversized and they're selling really nicely, to be honest. And I think it's it's confusing a lot of people, to be honest, especially around the town, because as they're walking around, you know, people think they work for us. So, <laughs> so. Hey, that, si Simon, Simon, he said they're oversized, so you might get in one of them. I knew you were going to say that. I'll let, I'll let <laughs> honest, before I before I speak, we'll be looking forward to an Insta's t shirt being sent to me and Gaz anyway, Reese. Absolutely. Reece, uh, well, Reece, don't ask Reece. me about that. Speak to Dale about that. <laughs> Reese, when when you, when you send us our free T-shirts, can I have a medium, please? Absolutely, we've got loads of them. Everyone here seems to be a fat bastard, to be honest. No, I don't know who's gonna fucking give that to. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it looks it looks a fantastic, shot, matey. I'm sure you, you're as busy as ever. Um, just, just one thing, just going back to, you said you've been in the industry, you know, for a little while. It's five years. You've been with, yeah. with the guys coming up to two in January of 22. Um, yeah. what, 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 what drew you to, to Hintzies in the first place? And, and what actually brought you into the barbering industry? Um, well, uh, I started my apprenticeship, basically. I, I was sort of involved in chefing. I did a little bit of music here and there. Um, I was signed to uh, a record label back in the day, and my drummer at the time was a barber. He actually owns his own barber shop in uh, Birmingham, which is Black Arrow Barbers, which is on the Coventry Road. Um, and he trained with people like uh, Pac-Man, he trained with uh, Josh O.P., he trained with Cal Newsom. So obviously he was very passionate about what he was doing, and that sort of, obviously, obviously I was listening to that, and I was like, that's quite cool. Um, pretty much as soon as I left the record label, I ended up back in Shrewsbury. Um, about three days later, I got a call from weirdly enough I got a call from a salon um, and they just offered me an apprenticeship and I thought well do you know what yeah all right why not um, so I've just been doing it since then and it, it's, it's one of those where I, I just couldn't sort of um, couldn't sort of drop it couldn't leave it behind and yeah so the the apprenticeship obviously apprenticeships when you're I think how old was I 23 apprenticeships when you're 23 are a, are a tumultuous thing because you, you're, you're a bit too old to make tea but you're a bit too young in the industry to be doing haircuts. So, yeah, I, th I think I think I, I had a, uh, I think I had a bit of a realization. Oh no, no! If you were an apprentice, <laughs> apprentice in our shop, you'd still be making tea. Well, that's it. Way. I soon found that out. I soon found that out. I was, uh, I sort of walked away from being on stages, and suddenly I was making tea for old beers. So it was that. That was humbling. I have to admit, I was humbling. 
Um, who's been your role model then as you've been working through this this period? Who's been your role model in, in the barbering industry? Do you know what? Um, it's, it's, it's changed. It's varied. It's, it's, been, it's been dependent on... I like to take things from a lot of people. Um, you know, I'm, I, I like to keep an open mind. I like to sort of take a lot. I mean, obviously, I'm going to say Dale. I don't know he's going to probably hit the WhatsApp now like because i know dale's watching this at the minute so dale's obviously going to rinse me for that um so i'm going to say dale obviously now that, that, that basically that's what drew me to him he won uh britain's best bar which was a bar comp competition in 2019 um that was common knowledge uh, around the time um and it sort of made sense rather than jumping from barbershop to barbershop we were sort of competing against each other it made more sense just to go for the big dog at the time um and i basically sat down with him and said and said listen You've just got a new because at the time he got he just done a look and learn with uh, Trevor Moots who Taylor fades because he'd just come over from America and Dale had just set up this this new shop and he'd moved over from another shop and he was here with another guy and I noticed the third mirror and I I, I, I don't I don't really um I don't really take too many chances I've started to now but then I, I just sort of put the boat out and I wasn't happy where I was and I was like right Dale I want to jump in with you because I'm, I'm not happy where I am now. So since then, obviously, you know, Dale's been very much a role model for me. Um, but it, it varies. Like, there's there's different role models. For example, it, it depends on who you see. I mean, I remember, to be honest, Simon, even I remember um, watching you in 2018 when I was at Barber Connect. Uh, that was that was amazing. It's, it's quite surreal talking to you now, to be perfectly honest. Um, and there was uh, so there's a guy called Brody Rayside who owns, he um, owns Heavy Hands in Il Ilkston, I think it's pronounced. Uh, he used to be part of Ghost Barbershop. His shape is incredible. Yeah. We have a lot of conversations. Um, there's a guy. I think he's. I think he's. I'm gonna. I'm gonna t attempt his name. He's Hungarian. He's in Scotland, and I think his name is Eni Ballo or something like that. And I found him on Instagram. And I think the guy has amazing shape. So it, it's dependent. Like there's a guy called Nunes. Um, not really too sure where he's based out of, but some of his weight lines, some of his shapes, take a lot of influence from that. So it's a lot of a lot, you know, a lot of various people. Um, I mean, obviously, when I was younger, and you know, it was a lot of Dale. You know, there was Cal Newsom because uh, he was just up the road from us, and I'll speak to Cal every now and again. Now it's, it's it's yeah, there's just been a lot of varying sort of inspiration. I suppose it's who your main mentor is at the time. I suppose. Yeah, of course. I think you've got like lots of people who've influenced your career, and you've 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 been to all demonstrations and shows and stuff, and. You know, if you watch Gaz shave as well, I'm sure you'd say Gaz as well from, from what he does when he, he does his shaving stuff. It's, it's really educational and, and superb. And also when he does his cutting as well. Um, what's your favourite wall clipper? Do you know what? I think you're going to love me for this. I've got a, and I've used it for the past three years, and I'll actually show you. Fucking oh. Let's keep his fingers crossed, Gaz. So, <laughs> yeah, man. Gammon. So I, no, it's not Gammon. So I've got a 2019 Barber Connect Limited Edition. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, and there was only wow. 250 of them made. Um, it's got, obviously, ever since its grip, ever since blades. And I actually, I resold the uh, the motor to that. So that's got a senior motor in it, so it runs faster. And I don't know how I managed to do that, but it, uh, it runs so, amazingly, and I still use it now. Just to let you know that over the years and, and over a, maybe a 15 year period we fetched out very limited edition lids it's the still yeah. if that's a super taper or a magic it's just a lid that's different for an exhibition and what have you but there was one guy i think it was in south wales that had got six in premier condition none had been used yeah there was a george's cross super taper corded one there was the 100 year anniversary clipper. There was um, a dragon clipper that we had. There were six in a collection. Oh, and he yeah. sold them for, I think, three and a half thousand quid. Oh, now, yeah. I looked at it, when I looked at it online, I thought, face value when he bought them, he's probably paid about six and a half hundred quid for them. Mm. So it just shows you when you hang on to stuff. If you, if you, I always say to people at exhibitions, especially with companies like ours that's been around for years and years is that when you get a limited edition if you fancy it buy one but try and buy one and keep one yeah i've always done that myself i always go and buy a, a, a hundred year anniversary clip and never use it i, I buy yeah. it the first edition senior and never use it 
Um, I just think they're nice collector's items. Not that I'm ever going to cash in, unless you fancy buying them, Gaz. Um, but, um... <laughs> do, you know, do you know what? Do you know what my biggest regret is from, from when I started? Was keeping me very first clipper. I mean, very first pair of scissors. You know, I mean, 38 years ago, 37. I've still got my first pair of scissors. I've still got my first pair of scissors. And my my other half's mum actually has my first pair of clippers because she does a little bit from home. So I thought you may as well hold on to these. And they were they were wild legends. They were. But, but the thing is, back then, like 37 years ago, it was, it, you know, all I wanted to do was cut hair and drink beer. So <laughs> not a lot. <laughs> not, not, not a lot changed. Lot. Not a lot's changed really, but I wish I agree with you. Was, you know, it's, it, it, it's just one. Can, can, you, can you remember when the, the anniversary the, the first seniors come out and you you had you were having the first two and I think it was the first hundred or two hundred and fifty engraved. I think uh, we had two hundred and fifty that weekend, and I think it was the first thirty sold each day you could get them engraved. Because the engraver were doing them by hand, so they weren't on a machine. I think yeah. For the hundred year anniversary, we had a, we had a guy there with a machine. It was a bit quicker, but the first one he were doing it by hand. So I know. The first thirty bought each day because thirty would give him a full day's work. Can't well, talk about the end of the day. Like. I, I I I bought a pair. Can you remember what he, what you asked him to put on my clippers? <laughs> <laughs> and your yeah. your and your 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 PA at the time said to me. I am not selling them to Gary if you put that on his clippers. <laughs> and in the end, you put the king on. <laughs> no, I've still got mine, though. I, I've still no. I've still got the senior. Listen to this, Reese. You'll love this. Yeah. Because at some point when I retire, I might sell it. And it's the first ever cordless senior off production that was sold in the UK. And it's Simon Shaw 001. It's the first <laughs> edition senior cordless. I keep on that. The first edition senior. So yeah, please. Reese, finishing off, what's uh, on the horizon? Is there any competitions that you'd you'd look to win? What's the what's the title that you'd like to have behind your name? Well, the problem is obviously working working alongside Dale, there's always gonna be there's always gonna be a healthy competition, but we support each other quite a lot. Um, I don't mind, to be honest. I enter all competitions that I feel like I'm applicable for. I'm not really in it for titles, to be perfectly honest, but it's great if they come along. Um, the on the horizon, we've got uh, we've got a couple of conventions coming up. That me and Dale are uh, cutting out. We've got um, the, I think the Great British Barber Bash, which is in London at the Oval. Um, there's that, and then just as things open up, do you know what I mean, we've got we've got our uh, our next look and learn, um, which is again at the college. Um, that's going to be on. I think we just confirmed it for Sunday, November seventh. So I think we've just made tickets live for that. Um, and yeah, there's just then I'm, I sort of do like um, I think there's a thing called Barber Club as well that, uh, that I'm a part of, so I do demonstrations for that as well. So basically, any competitions that sort of come up online, all like all of us in the shop, we all end up entering for it. Do you know what? In fact, actually talking about the um, talking about the, the the last wild one, I felt really embarrassed because like my my entry button didn't work on my phone. And I was getting annoyed. Now I was clicking. And I was saying to my missus in, in, in bed. I was, I was clicking away and I was going, come on, enter, enter, and all this. And I feel, and then by eventually I got an email saying you've entered. I thought, oh my God, I hope I haven't just. And I think I sent an email back going, I'm so sorry if I've just entered about 100 times. <laughs> I felt awful. I felt awful. But well, no, that's coming up at the end of this month, mate. So don't forget to enter. Absolutely, 100%. Reese, Reese, you're obviously a very, very confident guy. You give Dale a run for his money on talking. So I'm sure it's, 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 I'm sure it's a great atmosphere within the shop. We'll look forward to uh, the extra, extra large and the medium T-shirts in the post. Thank <laughs> you for being on the show. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on, mate. And I'll Thank hand over my partner in crime to give you the last word. Good luck, Reese. It's great to have you on the show, mate. I'm watching everything that you do, as you see, even down to watching you on a Saturday night singing Sweet Caroline. So I am watching what you're doing, and uh, you are on the radar, mate. You're doing some great stuff, you and Dale. So good luck to you. Get entered in for the World Barber of the Year, both of you. That's coming out end of August, but in uh, in the short term. Reese Whitehouse. Come in, sis. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Thank you. Pleasure. Pleasure. See you later, buddy. See you later, bud. Thank you.
Whew. All right. Yeah. Just take you a little know. breath. I'm just going to take a little drink. Do you know um, what? I, while you've been talking, I've been doing what you've been doing. I've been sneaky drinking tonight. I've had six meantime. That's not like you. Haven't you got a lot on in the morning? I'm going to football to watch Alex tomorrow afternoon over in Sheffield. Um, no, steady, steady morning. Um, I'm not, I, I can't, I, I, I don't know about you guys. I can't, probably like our viewers, I like to, there's certain things I like. I'll, I'll have a quick look through our show tomorrow morning. I'll listen to other, some podcasts. I'm into uh, Johnny Parkinson's podcast at Minute the Football podcast. So I'll listen to a couple of them, potter around a little bit. Have a look at some emails, and then um, I like to have a bit of a brunch about eleven. Um, I did that yesterday. You know, I had some beans on toast yesterday about half eleven. I didn't have all else to eat all day. Well, like I it, tell you what, you you've got a lovely life. You have you know. I know. I know. What a what a lovely lovely life you've Pat got. Left amazing. Everything's looking Go good. And- everything's good. Jesus. You can go when you want, have a little beard trim, some bed. Got, got an eye in her. God. I you, clean, you, eh? I do all my own cleaning, but everything else is good. So, yes, football tomorrow afternoon. Uh, finishing off with the Chinese probably tomorrow night. Uh, <laughs> don't know what I'm doing Sunday. Hey, don't send me a photo of it. <laughs> I want to see some more time. <laughs> right, so I'm going to go first tonight. Thank you, everybody, for watching tonight. We've had Shropshire on as well. Edgerton Barbers, they've been watching tonight. We've got Andrea Lim, Foster, Mark Walters, and all the usual suspects. Can I just say, Ross, if you're watching, we've had Ross Carter on as well from, from uh, up beyond Adrian's Wall as well. Keep them Scots out. So we've got Ross Carter on, but Ross Miller, we've can we wish you another happy birthday, sir? Love you. I will send you a private message soon. Um, well done to all. Can I just reiterate to all the British Hairdressing Award winners, finalists, and to our Olympic team. We're smashing it at the moment. I think we're sixth in the uh, in the medals tables. Uh, we've got some locals to us that that have taken um, medals as well. So. Everybody's working out there. Uh, Serial as well, sorry. Uh, I think she broke her hand or something like that. I noticed that on, on Facebook. So hope you get well soon, Serial. Um, love you all. Great weekend. I don't know what the weather's going to be like in your particular area. It's absolutely razzing it down at the moment where we are. So have a great weekend. We'll see you all next week. We've got some great guests. I'm sure Sam will tell you. But have a great weekend and stay busy. Well, guys, look, it's been an action packed show. Great to have Joff on. Um, I think Joff just was really honest tonight, guys. I thought I loved the interview with Joff, um, just going through about the last 12 months and uh, then opening up the new Bricky Row. Um, I enjoyed that interview, even though I knew a lot of the background story. I kind of liked it. Um, we also have um, Reese Whitehouse as well. Reese, wow. This guy's got so much confidence. I loved uh, even better for, for speaking to him like we have done tonight. Barbara Zams as well uncovers these kind of talents as well. This guy can talk. So, again, from my point of view, when you come on this show, when you speak to people and they've got that confidence as well, it really makes me sit up and look at people. Great week this week. Enjoyed working with all you fellowship project men, guys and girls that was on the shoot on Monday with Jonathan Andrews and uh, Gary, a friend of Barbara's Arms, Parry Stevens, the chair of the fellowship. It was a really good uh, Monday. And uh, it leaves me one last thing to say. We've got some great guests coming up next week and the weeks after. We've got loads of guests lined up now on Barbara's Arms. It's going to be really exciting and interesting. We've got a new podcast as well that's going to be coming up as well that's really, uh, really fun to watch and listen to. Um, so that's going to be coming up shortly as well. So it's, it all sends in for a really good thing here on Barbara's Arms. We've one of these shows that we weren't just about lockdown. We've had his expos. Um, we've got more expos coming. We've got more platforms coming. We've got more education coming. And these weekly shows, we might change. 
me and Gaz up a bit. Sometimes we need a rest. You might see me not here for, for a few weeks and another presenter in with Gaz and vice versa. But we've got some really good stuff that's going to be coming up here on Barber's Arm. So thank you for tuning in tonight. Thank you for listening in wherever you are in the next week or so. We know that you all follow us, India, Spain, all across the world, America, everybody who watches us. We appreciate everybody's views. Both me and Gaz look for all your comments afterwards. So we do really appreciate it. And for you guys here in the UK, you know who you are watching us every single week. We really appreciate all your support. Have a great weekend. Don't get too wet. Not in a weird way. Or maybe. But have a great weekend. Adios, amigos. Good night. God bless. Straight home, no messing about. <laughs>